Hi everybody and welcome to my kitchen. I'm the Sunglass Chef and today I'm super excited to share with you bone bean soup. Uh, this dish was inspired by my beautiful mother Carmen who was born and raised in Lisbon, Portugal. Mom, if you're listening, I'm dedicating this to you. My mom used to make this delicious soup with kale and cabbage and beans. It was absolutely delicious. And I decided years later that I was going to replicate that dish. So here we are today. Um, bone soup is a healing soup. It's a wonderful dish at any time of season. It's, uh, right now it's fall, so it's a good time for this, but any season is a great time for bone soup. All right, the ingredients, there are about a dozen ingredients all together. I'll start with the vegetables. We've got kale, bell peppers, cabbage, parsley, flat leaf parsley, celery, smoked sausage, and this is a kielbasa a sausage, and it's um, no antibiotics. We're using a soup base, a chicken base to cut on the thyme, better than bouillon, yellow onion, two and a half of them, garlic, and the star of the show, these are the bone marrow. All right, let's take a look at some of the, se the dry seasonings. We have garlic powder, onion powder, smoked paprika from Spain, rosemary, Spain crack. Now let's talk about Spain because there's a theme here as well. I'm wearing this apron that I picked up from Madrid, Spain. I had an awesome time with my family, my beautiful wife Esther and our two children and I brought this home as a souvenir and I decided, hey, the sunglass chef is going to wear it every time he prepares a meal. Alright, so back to our ingredients. We have oregano, we have parsley, basil, thyme, this is an Italian mix, Celtic sea salt, and olive oil. Celtic sea salt, very good salt. Don't use traditional table salt. Uh, I won't mention it, the name. Okay, Morton's. Don't use that. Uh, they have extra additives, chemicals that you don't need. Use a great sea salt. Celtic salt is wonderful. What I'm going to do is uh, share with you some of the utensils I use. My favorite knives, Wusthof knives from Germany. I've got a collection. Every great chef needs it. And if you don't have that, that's okay as long as it's sharp. Now cast iron. This, this cast iron uh, skillet is approximately 70 years old. It's a Griswold made in Erie, Pennsylvania. I've got a few of these and they're very important. There's just something special about cooking in a cast iron skillet that no other skillet can provide. I've got here approximately a 60 quart pan, commercial pan. I could cook it for an army. Tomorrow I'm going to be serving this for my extended family and my wonderful family here in Houston. And of course, the beans. Now you want to soak beans overnight. And these beans have been soaking and I'm going to drain it. I've added a couple bay leaves to it. And we're going to, I'm going to drain this. And we're going to put fresh water. Now you can use tap water. But I prefer to use uh, fluoride-free bottled water. Spring water or, or well water works great. And the beans that are in here, we've got six variety of beans. Let's take a look at these beans. We've got red kidney beans, pinto beans, we have black-eyed peas, navy beans, garbanzo beans. All right, those are our beans. And uh, next, we're going to pour this into our 60 quart commercial stock pot. Now you can use a smaller pot like this. This is approximately eight uh, quarts. I've got about four pounds of beans. You can half this or even use less beans, but this recipe I'm using today is for four pounds of beans. And this wonderful thing about beans is um, not only are they hearty and full of protein, but you can uh, comfortably keep them in the refrigerator for about five days so you can have wonderful meals ready to go and all it takes is three hours, approximately three hours of cooking time and your cooking time is reduced when you soak the beans in uh, water overnight. Alright, next we've got our onions diced up. Now you can use a food processor 
I choose to use my knife and chop it up. I like small uh, chunks. I don't want it too chunky, I should say small pieces. And uh, next I'm going to add some olive oil to my preheated cast iron skillet. Erie, Pennsylvania. If you're listening, you all made some amazing cast iron cookware. Put about four tablespoons. Next goes my onions. What I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be sauteing these onions. Okay? I don't like to put uncooked onions in my bone soup. I like it to be sauteed. And I saute these down approximately 40 minutes. That's right, 40 minutes. And I'll be turning them over and you'll be seeing what sauteed onions look like at the 40 minute mark. I will be also sauteing my bell peppers and uh, also garlic as well. So stay tuned for more. All right, everybody. If we take a look at this pot, we'll notice some foam. Anytime you're cooking beans, you're going to get foam. We don't want that foam, okay? So we're going to just scoop that out. And you're going to do that periodically while stirring this during a three-hour cooking process. The water is still uh, getting hot. We want it boiling. It boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So it hasn't quite reached that level yet, but we're a couple minutes away. But in the meantime, throughout the cooking process, I want you to keep in mind to remove the foam. This dish requires fresh garlic. And I've got a little tip when cutting garlic. First, you're going to smash down on the bulb. And the reason for doing that is twofold. One, it's easier to take the skin off. And two, you get more of a concentration of the juices. Okay. It's been about 40 minutes and these onions, yellow onions, have been sautéing nicely. It's got a great aroma, rich aroma that could be smelled throughout the home. And I tossed in some bell peppers. I always feel like sautéing vegetables makes the food more rich and flavorful. And so I do that. Um, I'll be sautéing the kale and sautéing celery. I won't be sautéing the parsley or the cabbage. They wilt too quickly and it, I'm not going to saute them. But I saute most of the vegetables that go into this wonderful and hearty dish. Now that it's been uh, approximately 40 minutes of sautéing the onions, I'm going to put the garlic. Now you'll notice how small the garlic uh, pieces are. I mince these garlics fine with my knife. Now again, you can use your food processor but I choose to I choose to slice them up and dice them so that I can get them just the right size. And you don't want to overcook your garlic. It's uh, burned garlic has a real distinct bitter taste, and you want to avoid. So we'll be sautéing these approximately six minutes. So in six minutes, what I'm going to do is take most of this in here and I'm going to blend it and I'm going to blend it into a puree and I'll show you what that looks like in just a few minutes. Now that the onions, the garlic and the bell peppers have been sauteed, I'm going to put most of it in this pitcher, blend it up and puree it and pour it into our, our uh, bean soup. So I'm going to pour it, not all of these, I want to use some of these onions and I want to use the green bell peppers to saute the smoked sausage. Now that it's in the blender, we're going to blend. All right, that was about 40 seconds of blending. Take a look at that. Beautiful. All right, now that we got this pureed goodness here, bell peppers, onions, garlic, sauteed, we're going to pour it into our stock. Let's come and take a look at this stock. It's definitely reached the desired boiling point and now we've sustained that boiling point and kept it at a medium height. Now, as the liquid evaporates, you're gonna to wanna to add more water. And this is the water we use here, spring water. Now you can use tap water if you like. I choose not to based on the chemicals and the fluoride that's in the water. But for those that don't have a problem doing that, feel free to use uh, any kind of water, but don't use distilled water. It's been over an hour of cooking, and next I'm going to be adding some fresh parsley. 
Now this dish we used uh, dry parsley and fresh parsley. We want to use the leaves. We want to actually remove on this fresh parsley, we want to remove the leaves from the stems. We don't want the stems in our parsley. Okay? And we're going to cut these out. We're just going to add this fresh parsley right into our stock. It's going to increase our flavor profile. We're taking this to the roof. At the beginning of the video when I was introducing the various ingredients, I forgot to mention two critical ingredients. One is chili to give it a bit of a kick and also cumin powder. Uh, this chili powder, I only used about half a tablespoon. You can always use more if you like it extra spicy. And on the cumin, I used approximately three tablespoons. You're going to want to use between three quarters of a gallon to a gallon of water for every pound of beans. I also will be adding cubed potatoes. Well, I just finished washing the kale. You want to wash it and then you want to strain it in this uh, colander. This is a five quart stainless steel colander. Uh, if you don't have something this large, you can just brush off the excess water and put it on a plate. Next, we're going to be slicing diagonally some smoked sausage. And I'm going to use two of these, they're about uh, 14 ounces, almost a pound, and we're going to slice them diagonally. Alright, now that I've sliced up the smoked sausage, these are already pre-cooked, but I like to brown them anyway, so I'm going to pour them here in this cast iron skillet. We're going to brown them up, and once they start browning up, I'm going to add the sautéed onions, garlic, and green bell pepper. We will be sautéing today celery and that will go in after I stir in the bell peppers. I want to wait about five minutes. This heat is medium heat and also I want to add just a little bit of fresh ground pepper to the stock. Gives it a nice smoky flavor. I don't want to add, and I did not add, any olive oil. There's already fat content in the sausage, so I went ahead and just heated the pan up for about five minutes, medium heat, added the sausage. This is celery, and I'm going to be adding this into the saute. I want to, if you notice, there's some leaves here. These leaves have great flavor. You don't want to cut these off. These add extra flavor to whatever dish you're preparing, so consider using the leaves and the stock. These sausages have been cooking for about four minutes. Now I'm going to add this wonderful goodness. Yellow onion sauteed with bell peppers, green, green bell peppers. I found that green bell peppers complement sausages better than the others. You can add any color that you like, but I personally like the green the best. It complements it the most. Now that the sausage has marinated with the bell peppers, onions, and garlic, I'm going to use these tongs and pull out the bell peppers. Now you can leave them whole or you can blend it. I like blending it and putting that puree, that juiciness, those wonderful profiles into the bone, the bone soup. So now I have the sliced celery with the leaves diced up and we're going to saute them. I left some of the fat flavor of the sausage in the pan to give it even more of a pow wow flavor. And we'll saute these for approximately four minutes. The bell peppers. So we'll saute the bell peppers with the celery and pour that magic into the stock pot. All right, now we've got our sauteed celery in that wonderful oil from the sausage, the smoked sausage, and I'm adding it to this pitcher that I'm, to the blender with the sauteed bell peppers, green. And it's gonna great, give a great flavor. Now, you don't have to blend these if you feel like dumping it right into the stock pot, you can do that because the last two items I want to put in here are actually three items. The last three are going to be cabbage, 
the potatoes and kale. You know, some people will cook kale for an hour, two hours, even three hours long, and I think that's way too long. I like to put it in the last 30 minutes. Blend this for about 30 seconds. All right. And we're going to dump this right in there. Now, one of the key elements to being a great chef is taking your time. Now, we could easily make this meal in two hours or less by getting canned beans. But canned beans don't taste the same as dry beans soaked overnight. Some of the best meals I ever ate were meals that took hours to put together and prepare. Fantastic. Looking great. Give this a stir. Let's see what this is looking like. Ooh, it smells so aromatic. Look at these beans. Wow. Absolutely. Just beautiful. A super nutritious healing liquid. Next, we're going to slice cabbage. I'm going to take the outside leaves off. And slicing cabbage isn't that hard. Okay, we're going to slice this in half. Alright, and then we're going to slice it in half again. We're going to use all of this cabbage. Fantastic. Now, there is a piece that I like to, to remove. This part here, the stem, just discard that. I'm going to slice this long ways. stem. stem has a very bitter flavor and you want to avoid cooking with that. And I'm just going to actually carry this into our stock pot and put it right in. Okay. Next is going to be the kale. With kale, you also don't want the stem. And so we're going to slice this off. This is the stem. We don't, don't want this stem. Okay. This is the kale, and I've removed the spine, the stem. And now I'm, gonna, I'm tearing these into small pieces. You don't want large pieces of kale. If I find a stem, I just discard the stem. But I'm tearing this, if you can see this action here, if we can get a close-up of taking the kale and just tearing it, shredding it by hand. I found this method is best so that you don't get large pieces of kale because kale is, is curly and when it gets hot, it expands. So it's just best to get small pieces you could use a knife for this. I choose to use my fingers. Well, the kale has been sliced up or shredded, I should say. Hand shredded. It takes a while. And I'm going to pour it in here into this cast iron skillet. Turn the skillet into a high-low, low-medium heat. Not too long, just enough to saute it slightly. I would say approximately five minutes max. These were two bunches of kale, a very healthy green vegetable. And doctors, they recommend eating 7 to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. So isn't it wonderful to be able to add all these vegetables into this wonderful, nutritious bone bean soup?
Ah, next, we've got to slice our potatoes. Slice, these are russet potatoes, I've already peeled them. I'm just gonna slice them up. I like them a little chunky. Well, I've sliced up the russet potatoes, approximately six of them. My dog, Spanky, wants in on the action. Can we get a close up of Spanky? There he is. And I'm gonna be adding the potatoes into this. And look how these, this kale has turned out. Ooh, just sauteed them about five minutes. And now they're ready to go in. We'll pour that right in. You don't want to overcook the kale. You don't want to over saute it, and you don't want to over boil it. And again, uh, I was inspired by my mother, and she was inspired by her, by her mother, my grandmother, Arminda, in Lisbon, Portugal. Arminda used to make kale soup with potatoes and beans, and my mom brought that dish with her when she and my father, my beloved father, Dr. Sebastian Kateka, moved to the United States in 1975. And uh, I dedicate this dish to Arminda, and my mother inspired this, Carmen Kados, out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, it's finished, the final product. Bone bean smoked sausage potato soup with kale and cabbage. Now to taste it. Mmm, absolutely delicious. The smoky flavor of the sausage, the garden flavors of the kale and the cabbage, the potatoes, the beans. Oh, it's absolutely delicious. Hearty and super fulfilling and nutritional. I hope you enjoyed this video. And now for the tip of the day. I've got in my hand a glass bottle of white vinegar. Vinegar is a wonderful cleaner. It's not just used for cooking, but it can be used as a cleaner slash disinfectant. I use it to wash my floors and also to clean my countertops. It doesn't matter what kind of surface your countertops are, Formica, granite, it works beautifully. Look how shiny this is. Just spray and wipe off.